There are two types of sequences that you want to know about for ACT math. And for a lot of them, you can actually figure out what the sequence is without using any type of formula. We are going to show you the formulas for the more complicated questions, but a lot of times you don't need the formula. No matter what you're working on, though, you want to first figure out if something's being added and subtracted or if something's being multiplied or, multiplied or divided. For this one, we are subtracting 3 each time. So 9, 6, 3, 0, and then we go negative 3, negative 6, and so on and so forth. Now for the next one, we're not adding because if we were to add, we would get 2, 6, 10, 14. That's not what's happening. Here we're multiplying by 3. So the next one would be 54. If you were to continue it, you'd actually wind up with really big numbers really quickly. So what if they wanted to figure out the 20th term? You could list it out, and actually if you did it by hand, that wouldn't be terrible, especially if you're using your calculator. But what if they wanted the 200th term? That's a little bit more complicated, and in that case, you would use a formula. There are two different formulas, depending on whether or not you're adding and subtracting, or multiplying and dividing. So if you're adding and, sub and or subtracting, you wouldn't be doing both, you would use this formula. Now D is the difference between the terms. And then for multiplying and dividing, or I should say multiplying or dividing, you would use this. But the good news is, if you are near test day, or if you know that memorizing formulas is not the easiest thing for you to do in the world, the good news is most of the sequence questions look like this. They look like this particular question in which they provide you with the sequence, which is right over there, and they tell you what it is, geometric, perfect, so you know you're multiplying or dividing, and they give you where in the sequence they need you to solve. So what you can actually do without even using any type of formula is you could just solve for what they're multiplying by each time, which is actually the R, and you can plug the R into the formula if you wanted to use a formula, but you're finding the fourth term and you've got all the other stuff. So if you find R, you're connect, you can actually solve for X. So how would we find R? We can actually take two of the terms. And we can say that something was multiplied to get the next term. So one term multiplied by the ratio between terms gives you the next term. You could have done it with four over three and one, but this one's a lot easier because you could just divide both sides by one and you'll find out that the R is three over four, which is answer choice D, you're all done. Uh, are you? They're, they want you to solve for X, so be really careful. And you can ask yourself, does this make sense? If I take four over three and multiply it by three over four, do I get one? Yep, if I take one and multiply it by three over four, do I get three over four? Uh-huh, so how do you get X? Take the term that's right in front of it, multiply it by the R, and you're gonna get the value of X. Now, what's tricky is the R is also three over four, so that's why this is a little bit tricky, but again, you don't have to use a formula. So three over four times three over four is gonna equal X. That's equal to nine over 16. Answer choice C, and you're done. So when you see a sequence question, especially when they tell you what type of sequence it is, use that to your advantage, don't panic, and work your way through it. If they do ask for something like the 200th term, then knowing those formulas can be really helpful. Either way, be prepared for sequences and get 